Oh, crap. It's the fuzz. Boy, am I in big trouble now. Looks like the jig is up, and I'm going to jail. Tickle F. Lockett, convicted felon. How has it come to this? How? How? You, the bearded dome in the car. Get out with your hands up. Am I under arrest? This is all a misunderstanding. All right, Gnome. We have the goods on you. Sing. Sing? Okay. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail? Okay, funny oh. man. Talk. Are you the ringleader? Ringleader? What? What are you talking about? We have ways to make you talk. Now squeal. <coughs> Spill the beans, gnome. Mmm, beans. I'm hungry and thirsty. I feel faint. Maybe I'll talk if I can get something to eat and drink. Okay, what do you want? I'll take some whiskey. And a zero bar, please. O'Brien, go get him what he wants. Mmm, that was good. I'm ready to talk now. Are you the Mr. Big in the IRS scam? Mr. Big? What? Hello, everybody. And welcome to part two of this 1934 Westinghouse model WR-24. Hello, sir. Before I start the video on the radio, I had a few inquiries about my little box here and how to hook it up and what you need. So let's just uh, go through it here real fast. What's in the box? Now this is basically a, a dim light bulb tester without the dim bulb. <laughs> Instead of the bulb, uh, you have this wired in. Oh, really? But uh, basically, it's a voltmeter. I use Simpson meters here. I like these analog meters. This voltmeter goes from uh, 0 to 150, and the amp meter goes from 0 to 1 amp. So if you've got anything more than 1 amp, it's just going to peg it, and you're out of luck. But for the radios I work on, from all American 5s to the early ones with transformers, the amps are usually between uh, 0.3 to 0.8. I've never had one, uh, well, I almost had one at 0.9, but we fixed that. That was the Stromberg Carlson. I changed some of the caps and I went back down. So I've never had a radio go over one amp. So this is ideal just for the radios. So what you need is these two meter gauges. Oh, you know. You need a switch and just an outlet plug here. Now the box I'm using is a recipe box. <laughs> you can pick them up cheap. My wifey bought this uh, for me because I hate going out to stores. So if you grab a pencil, I will show you how it's wired and you can sketch the uh, diagram as we speak, huh? I borrow a pencil. You got your AC coming in. Let's open the box. I got one uh, side of the AC line hooked up to the switch. Mm -hmm. The other side of the AC line is going up to the post here on this uh, voltage gauge. Uh -huh, that's right. And on that same post here, I've got this white wire running up to the uh, one side of the outlet. No kidding. So let's pick it up here after uh, the switch here. The other side of the switch has got this white wire, and this is going to the... Uh, the amp gauge post here and that uh, and this travels through the gauge to the other side while while it's measuring the the amps and from the other side this goes up here to this post up here now on the other side of the post here I got the post going here to the other side of the voltage gauge gotcha all right Dan pretty easy it took me about uh, two hours because I had to cut these holes out here. But once you got that done, it's uh, pretty fast. So that's all there is to it. 
I hope you uh, got all that and uh, there'll be a test on this later, right? All right. This is the schematic I'm working with. Oh, brother. This is a Westinghouse drawing. As you can see, it's weird. <laughs> Instead of the usual round uh, tubes and stuff, they don't even have that. All they got is like, this is the plate, the grids, heaters, cathode, and uh, that's the way it is on all the tubes here. Also, look at how it starts out with lots of room. And then as it gets towards here, everything is crunched in here. Like the guy ran out of paper or something. Oh, great. <laughs> and Brendan suggested maybe uh, Westinghouse used an appliance draftsman instead of an electronics one. Could be. It's barely readable, but I blew it up. It's like weirdo. And I wrote in uh, all the... Uh, specifications of the capacitor like this one's 100 picofarad this resistor here is 20k and I got the pins of the uh, the tubes and stuff it saves a lot of time because uh, if you got the value of the, uh, the capacitor or resistor it saves you time from looking at the parts list there damn right here's the transformer all wired up I just spliced on a new wire right around here and there was a lot of gap in here so I just put some uh, liquid tape down in there you can see that I've got the two uh, clamshells painted they look pretty neat let me show you a couple of pictures of how I did it while uh, when I'm putting these uh, clamshells on all right I blew off some of the dust on this speaker here. Looks as good as new now, eh? It looks like it's in good condition here, but we need to test it. The schematic does not specify any uh, ohms for either this output transformer or the uh, field coil in here. So we're just going to run some tests on it. Let's just ohm it out here. Uh, let me show you my meter here. We'll just put it on 2K and see what we get. We'll do the uh, output transformers, these two uh, on the end here. So let me do this so I'm not in the way here. Let me see here. Maybe it's more than 2K. Put on 20K here. What the hell? Oh no! Meter's okay. I'm don't look good here. Mm, you dirty rat. Damn it. Well. Crap. It looks like that thing is open. Your fly is open. All right. Let's just try the field coil. Field coil is this red one and this one here. Huh? Oh, rats. Don't tell me that's gone too. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. 20 meg scale. <laughs> well, that's no damn good. The whole thing is blown. How the hell could the, both of those be blown? I think the rectifier took that out when it blew up. I wonder why I got this for 20 bucks. Damn it. Well, it's time to de-stink this thing because it stinks like uh, rat pee. So I bought some alcohol here. 99%. Wow. Stuff's not cheap. Cheap bastard. So I'll just give it a bath here on top here first. Stink. Stank. Stunk. 
Good thing Dickel's not here. He'd be drinking all that alcohol. Oh boy, whiskey. I think I'll just uh, put some in a water bottle and spritz it on. You see my progress here. I placed one cap here. <laughs> all in all, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. You're dishonest. Dishonest? Me, Shaq, Shadrach, and Abednego. You cheated us. Sal, you impugned my honor. It's my dear old grandfather, Lickbox, said, just before the sprung the trap, he said, you can't cheat an honest man. Never give a sucker an even break or smarten up a chump. I was in love with a beautiful blonde once, dear. She drove me to drink. That's the one thing I'm indebted to her for. Well, let that dry and uh, give it the smell test later. Godfrey Daniels! Oh boy, you know, it's always something when you work on these old radios. Since this is opened, I didn't check the uh, the voice coil, which is right here. Let's check that. I know nothing, nothing. Look, we got a reading on the voice coil, so that's good. So I was thinking of maybe taking this apart. First, uh, the field coil. Now, I've never done this before, but taking it apart and... Uh, See if there's any, uh, maybe there's a loose wire under this tape here. Because it doesn't smell like it's burnt. And this thing looks in good condition too. So I was really surprised that uh, I didn't get no readings on it. But uh, I'd seen John from Arkansas take one of these apart. But that was a long time ago and I don't remember. So I'm going to try to do that. I'll just try one screw here and see if it uh, gives. Take your time. There's no rush. Yeah, that will come off. It doesn't get any easier than that. I think what I should do is take this off first. Oops. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I didn't wreck it. I wrecked it now. Well, maybe not. Let me see if I can get this thing up. Okay, I guess you call that the spider or something like that. I will. This is all new to me here, so, you know, instead of doing the same old boring things when you do these repairs, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe I can wind one of these coils here or fix it and then wind the other coil. Yeah. That might be fun, huh? Let's we'll see if I can get this off. Been on there since 1934. Huh? A little bit of rust on the uh, screws, but I have to take all of Buzz's strength just to get that loose. <laughs> I asked Brendan if he's ever rewound a uh, coil, and he said, "Hell no! That's not his bag, you know." He suggested using the permanent magnet. No way. Jose, am I gonna do that? If I can't fix this, I'll get another one with a field coil. I like field coil speakers. They're cool. Uh, I'd like to stroke it. Hey, so that's gonna come loose. You did it, boy. And there it is. I always wondered uh, how those worked. They always had these shims on here. I wonder why they have shims on there. I will. I don't know. I've labeled these two so I know where they're gonna go. Perhaps we've been incorrectly labeled. They probably won't come off. There goes that one. There goes that. Okay. That comes loose or not? Think I can pry that up? I think that comes off, doesn't it? This is nothing but a spool, I think. I don't know. I will. You got me. I'm gonna have to go in the corner and think. Hey, I think I'm uh, getting lucky here. I just kept tapping it with this hammer. I noticed it's uh, it's loose. There we go. Great. And now what? Hmm. Well, let's see if I can take this, whatever's holding that on there. Is that tape? 
Looks like it's uh it's electrical tape, but something was painted over it. Well, that's no good. I wonder if I could just buy this. Buy whoa! Since I got it there, let's just measure it outside here. Nope, it's still open. <laughs> I was hoping something miraculous would happen and it would, it would come to life there, but uh, no such luck. Oh, brother. Let me ponder this and uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, I got it exposed. The stuff is more like uh, cardboard, paper, and uh, this old, uh, looks like that type of tape that we used to use, adhesive tape for bandages or whatever they used to call that. Let's just make sure I got continuity between uh, this point and this wire. That's continuity there. And we still got nothing here. Nope. Let's keep on wrapping it and see what we get. Maybe I should make Dick a wind this. I was reading online uh, at the radio, the antique radio forum that uh, some of these wires are thin wires and it could be like two miles of wire. <laughs> what is a mile? How many feet is that? 3,000 feet? Um, Probably 6,000 feet of wire. Who knows? Well, I've been playing with this for quite a while here. <laughs> and if you look on here, you see how the, uh, looks like the enamel has been burned away. Okay, I managed to peel all this cardboard out. And I started unwinding it. At one point, I had three pieces of wire separately that had come loose. So there's multiple breaks in this thing. And it looked like uh, maybe the wire was just uh, kinked and stuff in some of there. Maybe it was just a bad quality or maybe that's what happens when uh, the wires get shorted out or something. They kind of fuse together. I don't know. But I think I'm going to rewind this thing. Might make an interesting video here. Now, there's no way I'm going to count the number of turns on there, but uh, I was thinking maybe I could weigh it. Save this, and save this, and see how much that weighs. Then I'll see how, how much this spool weighs. Uh, then I'll be able to find out uh, exactly uh, how much wire to put on there. Does that sound crazy, or does that sound like a plan? Well, you're crazy! And I looked at the wire here when I... Uh, did the uh, the coil remember that coil winding I did this is 40 gauge wire and this is a lot thinner than this so I'm gonna have to do some homework and come up with maybe uh, 36 38 wire I mean this wire is uh, there's a lot of wire on there See, it goes from the hub there all the way up there that's a good uh, almost half inch of wire but it might make interesting uh, video as far as the output transformer I can take it apart and see if there's any wires loose towards there but, uh, but I think the winding of the field coil would be interesting yes it is I'm gonna take a look at the output transformer but uh, before we do that I took it off here and I want to measure the voice coil resistance in here. So you're a persistent cuss, pilgrim. My meter is kind of weird. So that's measuring like uh, 4.4 ohms. So that's probably good. The two wires coming out that connect to the voice coil. Let's check this. This is ridiculous. 1.4 ohms. So I'm assuming that's good. So that uh, secondary winding is probably okay. Our problem here is we have no primary winding. It's open. So I think I'll take this apart and take a look at it. Probably hopeless, but you got a dream. Well, I took off uh, the brackets on it. Well, I can't really do nothing on this because I'd have to unravel this uh, secondary to get to the wires here, so... I'm gonna take that apart off camera and just play with it. 
If I find anything, I'll have to keep you posted. Well, that was pretty easy. It just came out in sections here. I'll say! So I'm gonna start unraveling it. And again, if I come across anything interesting, I'll uh, bring the camera over and I'll show it to you. Okay, I've unwound the uh, secondary coil here. Holy moly! And I counted 22 turns on here till they put a piece of paper on there and uh, turn another 22. Look at this. It's like a slinky here. A slinky, a slinky, it's fun for a girl and a boy. <laughs> but, let me show you what I found here. You got the coil here with the, uh, the big wire connected to the thin wire here. The same thing was over here, but it was uh, on this paper here, and I was pulling the paper out, and the, uh, the wire kind of fell off. But I scraped the enamel off here. So check it out, Mikey. We can save this thing. We're gonna save it. Well, I've repaired it. I cut a copper strip here. I'm gonna put some epoxy down on there so that doesn't move. I'm gonna make sure this one doesn't move either. I'll put some epoxy on here. I'm gonna wrap some uh, paper around there and then I'm gonna rewind the secondary, which should be fun. But thank God I could save that. Hopefully it'll work. Here's something I, uh, concocted here this is just a prototype i'm gonna make it a little bit different when i do it for real here but uh, what i did was i took uh, a foot here oh dear me from uh, some furniture took this apart and uh, used the ends here used a uh, threaded steel rod here and some wing nuts and these brackets this is all stuff I had in the garage, so it didn't cost me a penny. That's what I like. It's cheap. I've got my 45-year-old drill that I bought when I was 18. This is basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a cradle for this. This, this board here is going to be longer. I'm going to have some more brackets here with the big spool here. So when I wind this, I've got this hooked up to the Variac. So when I start winding, I'm just going to... Shouldn't uh, take more than uh, an hour or two, huh? <laughs> it's got to be... Uh, got to be uh, secured and stuff but you get the idea so I ordered my wire I'm gonna wind this this is a 34 gauge wire I had it checked at Ace Hardware so I'm getting a, uh, a pound of it and this whole thing weighs eight ounces so that's a half a pound so I'll probably use half of it I ordered some uh, 24 gauge wire for the uh, secondary on the output transformer. I tried to wind that stuff back on there, but all the uh, enamel is coming off on it. So I'm going to start with clean wire. So next week you get to see me winding two coils. Now I'm going to do this one with the drill. The, uh, the other one is only uh, 66 turns, so I'll be doing that by hand because the wire is so thick. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time. This is Buzz. Good night, Fred. Good night, Wilma.